This is the day the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in this beautiful summer June Sunday as we join in together to do the thing to exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is worthy of our praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's just whisper a prayer as we gather in. There are those who are coming to the parking lot again. We have some shaded areas. Uh, we're not going to put anybody out in the in the sun this, this morning, uh, but we give thanks unto the Lord. Father, we give thanks unto you. We lift our hands in praise and adoration. Fill us, Lord God. Fill these vessels today as we come to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We exalt you. We welcome you in this place. Meet every need, Lord God, as only you can. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen, amen. Let's celebrate the Lord in some way today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Want to ask those of you who are in our outdoor service, let's stand for the reading of the scriptures. That's right, amen, amen. Psalm 48 is our scripture for our sanctuary this morning. And uh, as we read the word of the Lord, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God in his holy mountain. Beautiful in his loftiness, the joy of the whole earth, like the heights of Zephon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them from there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by the east wind. As they have heard, as they have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her, God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O oh God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages in Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go round about her, count her towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. This God is our God forever. My brothers and sisters, we have a story to tell as we dwell and live here in 2021. As we think back, through the months, as we think back through last year, we have a story to tell to the next generation. We understand well that the next generation 
is not in so much in gathering in a name of a community of faith, but we have a story to tell. Let's not forget that. And even as we take note of our lives on this day, we are mindful that we have a story to tell. Amen, amen. You may be seated as we're gathered here as we establish agreement. Jesus Christ is truly Lord. I'm so glad again extending the warmest of welcomes unto you today on this beautiful Sunday morning as we unite our hearts together in praise as we unite ourselves recognizing that every day is a gift from God and we celebrate the gift that God has granted unto us. As we gather on this second Sunday of uh, June, I pray that uh, as you establish yourselves, as we believe that the Lord is still in control, we're making decisions every day that will honor him, that we will give him praise and thanksgiving. We're going to be getting ready to give ourselves into prayer, the petitions, the needs of the hour, as we pray for the world around us, the needs that are there, as we pray that the wickedness of the enemy would be pulled down, the strongholds of the enemy would be pulled down, as we would position ourselves to play a role in transformation of the land in which we live in. And so as we uh, ready ourselves, we pray that there may be a revival, we pray that there may be spiritual awakening, that eyes and hearts and minds would be opened unto what the Lord is doing, that the heaviness, the anger, the bitterness, the malice that people are holding on to, it would fall, and that the peace and the joy and the presence of the Spirit of God, this happens because the people of God give God permission to come and to shower, to rain down, to beam down on us as only He can. We know that there are needs, there may be sickness, there may be stressors in life, there may be uh, diseases in families, relationships. We want to cast those cares on the Lord, even as we ask Minister David Tanner to come and to prepare to lead us to the throne of grace in our morning prayer. Let's believe that there is a wonderful power in prayer. And it's not just somebody that is voicing, but we establish agreement in the land today uh, around the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is exalted indeed. So whatever the need may be, even as we pray one for another today, be encouraged, be strengthened, be blessed today. Receive of the Lord, uh, even as sometimes we become so focused on what we want to do and what our immediate desires are. We're praying for our neighbors today, praying for those needs that are there. We're praying that healing would, would manifest itself. We're praying continually that COVID-19 would be absolutely, totally destroyed. And we're doing our part to make sure that it takes place in that. Let's ready ourselves for prayer. Position yourselves in prayer uh, for this morning as we just ready ourselves as whatever you, position you take in prayer, lifting up hands, just availing yourselves, bowing uh, where you are, uh, whatever it may be, let's establish agreement. There is power in prayer today. have confidence in a God because I'm a living witness of his goodness and his mercy that endured forever. Times when uh, my back was against the wall and times when it appeared that I wasn't going to make it. One day God stepped in and he saved my soul and he allowed me to, 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 to rise up to a new level, to another level and uh, speak those things that are behind me. They're, they're, those things are former things. So I look each day for something brand new because um, God's mercy is new every morning. So I want to share a scripture with you on this morning. And I ask you and I encourage you to continue to believe God. You know, the word of God says that Abraham believes God. And that's a powerful, powerful scripture to me. Uh, 
So regardless of what happens in my life, regardless of what happens in the pandemic, pandemic, whether there's an accident on the highway or there's a big rig that flips over right by my house or there's been a chemical release or whatever, David Tanner believes God. I believe God, man. I believe God. I just want to share this word with you on this morning. And we're going to see God in prayer. And we're going to continue to make it, y'all. Amen? Amen. Yeah, we're going to continue to make it. See, because this race we're in wasn't given to the swift. Nor was it given to the quick. But those that endure to until the end, man. Those who have persevered, persevered until the end. And it's not necessarily always easy. But God is faithful to see you through. Amen? And I think about natural races, they're not always easy. Sometimes you watch the marathons, they become very brutal. How these guys just continue to run in the marathons, their thong races, their legs begin to bleed, the bottom of their shoes will come out, they're running up on just pavement, their feet are torn apart, but they continue until the end. And I believe this morning, that's the type of guy that we serve on this morning. He wants us to persevere and press through until the very end. Amen? Amen. I want to share this word with you on this man. It says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shadow at your right hand it says the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night the Lord shall preserve you from all hmm. that's why I get some, some of that's where we get confused from the Lord shall preserve you the word of God says from all now some of us think he's gonna preserve us from just a little bit of evil that he's not going on uh, but the word of God says the Lord will preserve us from all evil. So anything that come on you that is not of God, it's an evil. You know, amen. Um, Especially sickness. Because the word of God says, God said, above all things, I desire that you would prosper and be in good health. So if you're not up in good health though this morning, it's an evil. We're going to pray it out. You. Amen? amen. So God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word, Father God. For, for your word to us this morning is rhema this morning, God. It's, it's, it's food as it, it ministers to our inner man, to our spirit, not to our natural man. But God, this morning we come to make connections with you because you're a good God. You're a great God. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. God, you made provisions that we might could be here on this morning. God, you made provisions in our household. You made provisions on our jobs, in our condition, in our circumstance. God, you've kept us. Though there's been difficult times, there's been times when maybe we felt like quitting, but yet we pressed through and we continue to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue because we had understanding on this morning that this race haven't been given to the swift, nor has it been given to the quick, but those that persevere and endure until the end. So this morning, Father God, we declare ourselves mighty warriors of Christ so this morning. Father God, we come to the cross just to, to re-energize ourselves on this morning that we will have more of your glory to give to your community, more of your power to give to your community, more of your love. So I thank you this morning that, that you're an awesome God. I thank you this morning that you're merciful God. I thank you this morning that you're a good God. Father God, I thank you this morning that you look beyond our faults on this morning and you saw our need this morning, a need to hunger and thirst and love and desire all of you. So we give you praise this morning. We give you glory. We pray for every person that's in this this assembly on this morning, every person that's in this ministry, that those that are not here, those that may even be, be sick on this morning, God, I send the word this morning that heals their body because we, we, we realize that healing is the children's bread on this morning. So I speak life this morning. I speak life to the young person and to the old person this morning that's suffering from depression and that's been oppressed on this morning. I send your word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus on this morning, they would lift their spirits up, that they would get out and go out and share the good news. Because in spite of their difficult time, there still is a God that sits up high and he looks down low by. He sits on the, as I said, he sits on the circle of the earth. 
So I thank you this morning as well because you are such a good God. Now I lift up our kids that have returned from school. Father God, I thank you that they, you brought them through safely on this year, Father God. And as they prepare, parents prepare them for a new year. God, I speak life to those kids. I speak life to those teachers. Lord, I send your word up in the classroom to the teachers and to the principals and to the superintendent, Lord God, that there is a valuable tool that's been placed in their hands. And we're held accountable for raising those kids in a godly manner, in a manner that would that 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 that, that would, they would fear God. So I thank you this morning, God. We love you this morning with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our might. God, we give it all to you on this morning, Father God. Not just some of it, but I give it all to you that you would order the steps. You said the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. And I declare righteousness in this sanctuary on this world. I declare that every brother here, every man of God here is a righteous man and their steps are to be ordered by you on this one that you are the author of our coming and of our going on this one, Father God. And we send the word. To those that are lost in the community. We send the word to the devil on this morning, God. I send the word to the devil on this morning. Pack your bags. Head out. Because my Bible tells me that the kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent taken by force. And we're taking our small community back this morning by force. So I give you praise this morning. I give you honor. And I give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, let the saints of God say, Amen. Amen. Have your way, do what you want to do. Let's take your Bibles now. We ready ourselves for the message this morning. Uh, the message is entitled The Environment. The Gospel of, of Mark, chapter 9, is where we want to uh, focus our attention for our lesson for this morning. And uh, as we look at uh, this ninth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, our text immediately would be verses 22 through 24. But uh, we pick up in uh, the context of what's going on uh, as Jesus comes down from what we know uh, we call the Mount of Transfiguration. And there's a situation that's going on. Jesus had gone to the mountain with three of his, uh, with his disciples, and uh, the other nine were down, and they had... Uh, been off apparently a little bit more than they had anticipated and so this is where we pick up in uh, in our text of scripture verse verses 22 through 24 um, as uh, again there was a man who had a son that was demon possessed okay so verse 22 is uh, um, Jesus has asked how long has a child been like this verse 22 uh, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Today, as we launch out in our message for today, uh, we ask ourselves the question, what have we gotten ourselves into? We don't stay in bed on Sundays anymore. We come out to outdoor services. Uh, what have we gotten ourselves into as we look at what the commitment has been that we have made, what have we gotten ourselves into? Sometimes you can look at children in their play, and sometimes children in their play, they kind of take on big, big projects, and they have big things. They're doing something in the yard. They're taking some equipment, some big boxes, and 
somehow, some way, they have gotten into a bit much, and things begin to clash, to, to 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 crash on them, and things begin to kind of unravel before they realize it. You you go outside and you start fussing. What did you do? What did you do? But those children realize, what have I gotten myself into? This may be a bit much for what my capacity may be. Some, some of us men, we get into some projects. We can fix our cars. We can fix the electricity issue in our homes. We can fix the plumbing issues in our homes. And, and before long, it, it dawns on us, what have I gotten myself into? You know, you, you, even when you buy things for, for yourselves, you buy furniture, you got to put it together. And by the time you get through putting together the furniture, you still have about eight pieces left over. And you're like, what, 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 what happens to these pieces? What have I gotten myself into? If you're like me, I don't necessarily like to read the instructions. I can see the picture on the box. And I can see exactly where every part belongs. And before long, it comes to the point, what have I gotten myself into? Let me go back to the directions. And sometimes I realize things are upside down, backwards, and I have to unscrew some stuff that I saw the picture and I thought I knew what I was doing. But we ask ourselves the question, what have I gotten myself into? And so we're like that even as believers today. As we live in this 21st century world, as we live in the awakening from the pandemic, and we see that in many instances, things have gone from bad to worse. There have been some practices that uh, folk were doing, but yet uh, some of those addictive practices, uh, some of those personality issues, uh, they're always angry and always mad and always have an issue uh, and uh, not realizing of some of the strain in our mental health and yes, our spiritual health uh, that it has taken over the last year or so. We have done what we could do, what we felt, but what we, what we believe we could do in addressing the spiritual health issues that uh, we have looked at in our lives. But sometimes as we make a decision and a commitment to follow Jesus Christ, then there's a time that you say, well, listen, I didn't get into it for this. I just got to lay down my religion for a while and handle up upon these people. There's messing with me. I don't have it like you have it, Pastor. I got to get them straight. You ask yourself, what have you gotten yourself into? It's not a pastor salvation and an individual salvation. We're all on the same plane. I have some accountability issues that I'm responsible for, but we're all on the same plane of this life of righteousness. What have you gotten yourselves into? You look in the here of the, st of the status of righteousness and holiness and you begin to say, oh, I don't think that's for me. What have I gotten myself into? As we recognize what's going on and we see uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing and what he is saying in our text of scripture, we remember that we have to arise and to realize that, yeah, you and I have been called to make an impact upon this world that we live in, an impact upon this area that we live in, an impact for the sake of the kingdom of God. And so we desire to see our world system operate differently. We desire to see Jesus Christ exalted. We desire to see him lifted up. But yet, as we believe and desire that, sometimes when we see that our prayers have fallen short, our desires and what we believe and what we thought was going to happen didn't quite measure up to that, we may find ourselves asking that question, what did I get myself into? Is this really worth it in regards to all of that? And so sometimes what we pray for seems to be out of reach for God. Since we've never seen it come to pass, We've never seen some things transition in our families. We've never seen some things really manifest themselves in a way that would be honorable unto God. 
Well, before we get too deep in that, let's get back into our text of Scripture. And hopefully there'll be some things that will emerge in your spirits and your hearts as the Spirit of God speaks unto us. As we look at our text of Scripture there in the ninth chapter of March, of Mark, we see Jesus coming off the mountain where he was transfigured. He was, uh, he was in a glowing state, if you will, as he was up there with Moses, with Elijah, and his three disciples that were with him, Peter, James, and John, saw all of this, and they were so awed at the worship and at the glory of the Lord. They wanted to build an altar right there. They wanted to build a monument to say that we know that God has shown up at this particular place. And then we see in verse 14... Uh, uh, they came down off of the Mount of Transfiguration as Jesus says, look, I have a mission to do. We're working on this. And uh, in verse 14, we see that they're the meeting the other nine disciples who had, were engaged in a serious argument. You see, there had been this father that had brought his son uh, to Jesus. He was looking for Jesus. Didn't realize that Jesus was not there. Jesus was up on that Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, this father's son had been demon-possessed. The, 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 the son, the demon would throw the son into fire, into water, just, just, just whatever. Just messed up life. And this father came to Jesus because he believed that Jesus could do something, could deliver his son. He had heard about the miracles that Jesus had performed. And so since Jesus was there, those nine disciples say, <clears throat> We got this. Bring the boy here. We're going to deliver this boy. And they laid hands and they prayed on the boy. And they did this. And the boy stayed demon possessed. And they began to scratch their heads. And we, we saw Jesus do this. We had followed Jesus. We think we're using the same script. We looked at point one and point two and step one and step B and step elemental P. But yet nothing is happening. Boy, they was like, oh, they was probably fussing at each other. Oh, Judas, you, it, it's your fault. We, Matthew, we heard you. You was jingling your money. You was getting your tithes and offerings together. And you were supposed to be here believing that this demon would come off of this child. And they were arguing among themselves. And when Jesus comes down off of the mountain, he is confronted with all of this. Those nine disciples who are arguing amongst the fault, it's your fault. It's your fault. You, I, I, I saw you cursing last night, and so you brought your unbelief here. No, it's your fault. I saw you arguing with your wife. It's your fault. And so I can just imagine in my sanctified mind, these nine disciples who were representatives of Jesus Christ just couldn't pull it off. And they were probably thinking, Lord, what have we gotten ourselves into? We thought we can do this. We thought we can carry on with what Jesus was doing. And so even as we uh, look at our text of Scripture, uh, we see uh, those disciples. And that's what I want to harp on. We know what happens, or you can read in the Scriptures about how Jesus delivered that boy. But I want to engage us as we think, as we find some takeaways, as we provide some material for the Holy Spirit to speak unto us, uh, to address us in our lives as we move forward. We recognize that what these conversations that these nine disciples are having, um, maybe you and I have some of those conversations. What have we gotten ourselves into? Daddy, will you pray for me? And Daddy prays for you. But yet the issue still comes and it's so, so, so overwhelming and daddy's prayer didn't work. Mama, will you pray for me? And mama's prayer didn't work. And mama anointed her child and the more she anointed the child, the more the devil rose up in the child. Overwhelmed. What have we gotten ourselves into? And so some of that sounds familiar as we're trying to conquer that issue in our lives that inconsistency that sin that issue that stronghold we've claimed our deliverance but yet 30 days later boom it's right there in front of us again what have we gotten ourselves jesus i believe you delivered me jesus i believed for a new sanctified life i believed for that but yet we see that sin, that strong self-will of yours, that mouth of yours, 
still getting you in trouble. You always in somebody else's business. You thought you had committed your mouth to God, but yet your mouth want to know what the latest gossip is all about. Yeah, yeah. We all deal with this. We all deal. What have we gotten ourselves into? And so as we keep praying for that deliverance and that salvation, even as we're believing for our families, as we're believing for our community, as we pray for the transformation of our communities, as we pray and believe for financial breakthroughs in our lives, as we pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ, for them to do some things to start measuring up and stop slacking, because you've been praying and believing for them for a minute. As we deal with all of this, understand that Exercising faith is more than just memorizing scriptures and saying the right words. All of that plays a role indeed, but I've come to remind us today as we tie some things together that uh, faith is more than just memorizing those right scriptures. Um, so today I want to deal with your head as your head deals with your heart uh, to deal with the frustrations uh, in your lives as you are dealing with faith issues. Please know, my friends, that you and I live in an unbelieving generation. Jesus said that almost 20, uh, 2,000 years ago. You and I here in the 21st century, we recognize and realize that you and I are living and dealing with an unbelieving generation. Even as Jesus says in verse 19 of our text of scripture, an unbelieving nation, an unbelieving people, people who don't even count that as being real, the things that we believe with in faith. And so what this means is that, listen, it's easier for us not to believe something is possible than it is for us to believe that it is possible. Because you and I live in an unbelieving generation, that means that it's easier for us uh, not to believe something is possible than it is to believe that something is possible. So it's, it's easier to be unbelieving. Because we live in an unbelieving uh, generation, an unbelieving day, is easier. We can coast our way to unbelief. No problem. Get up, God. Thank you for waking me up. I spent my 30 seconds with you. Move about our day. Just want you to know and realize it's easier for you to believe that things aren't possible because of the generation. So that means we gotta we gotta live our lives in a different way because we are in an environment of unbelief. When we are in an environment of unbelief, it makes it all that more difficult to believe and to trust God for some things. This is why I believe it's important that we assemble ourselves any way we can, under a tree, under anything, under the sun, whatever it is, it's important for you and I to gather in places and in situations and use the technology that's there that we can help our unbelief. Oh yeah, you know where I'm going. We got to overcome this unbelief daily. Scripture says that Jesus did no miracles in his hometown of Jerusalem because there was no belief. People didn't believe. So there was Jesus performed zero miracles in his hometown, his hometown, his stomping grounds. Zero, zero miracles because people did not believe. The people did not believe. And so as I think, even in the area that we live in, in the parish we live in, you know, I ask the Lord to help me because I hear this statement I'm going to quote over and over and over again. And I'm thinking there can at least be at least one answer to this question. You know, people say, oh no, you live in that parish, ain't nothing going on there, you better get out, nothing good, nothing good is there. You live in Palmetto, ain't nothing good there. Get out in a hurry. If I can just one day hear somebody say, there's nothing but Jesus in Palmetto. Jesus is there. There is belief there. There is belief in St. Landry Parish. Jesus is lifted up in St. Landry Parish. Can anybody one day at least say that for me? 
When you said ain't nothing around here, nothing, there's Jesus. You just said that Jesus is not even there. See, we live in an unbelieving generation who will say there's nothing good. If anybody want to find Jesus, they can come right here. Oh, glory to God. Anybody want to see what the work of the body of Christ is, they can come here. You don't have to go to Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, New York City. You can come right out here in the woods and see the move of God. You can see righteousness, holiness, sanctification. You can see it manifested right up in this place. Oh, thanks be to God. Ain't nothing good. So if there's nothing good, that means just like Jesus. Jesus could do nothing because there was unbelief. People kept on doing those things. People kept on giving into the heartaches and the hardships and turned to everything they could but Jesus. So when we can recognize that, we can see in verse 23 of our text of Scripture, Jesus paints the picture. He paints the environment for things to happen. Verse 23 states the condition for a miracle, the environment. It says, Jesus says, to him that believes, all things are possible. To him that believes, come on, all things are possible. That's the condition. That's the environment. For all things that, for all things to happen, for all things, what, what's the condition? To him that believes, to the one who believes, all things. All things are possible to him that believes. And so Jesus teaches there the condition, the environment for that. The condition is belief. The condition is belief. Whatever the environment may have been prior to it, ICU, PCU, AIU, whatever the condition may have been as you were in a hospital, understand for things to take place, for, things, for, the, for there at least to be the possibility out there to the one who believes. And so what Jesus is doing to this father, he's telling this father that the cure of your boy, the deliverance of your son, is not so much on me, but it's on you. It's not so much on me, Jesus is saying. Even as those nine disciples are huddled around and seeing what Jesus is saying, for there to be change, for there to be transformation, for there to be an outbreak of the move of the Spirit. Jesus is saying it's, 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 it's not so much on me, but it's on you. Remember the condition, the environment for a miracle, for a breakthrough? To him that believes, to the one that believes, all things are possible. Listen. To approach anything in a spirit of hopelessness is to make that situation hopeless. Let me say that again. To approach any situation, anything that you are from, to approach that thing with a spirit of hopelessness is to make that hopeless. Oh, that child of mine ain't no good. Ain't no good at all. Oh, that boss of mine, he ain't no good. She ain't no good. To approach any situation with a spirit of hopelessness is to make it hopeless. And again, it's so easy to do this because we live in the environment. It's a natural thing. It's easy to do this. Hopelessness. But there's a flip side to this. Listen. To approach any situation in a spirit of faith is to make it a possibility. To approach any situation with a spirit of faith is to make it a possibility. I know we have to deal with our issues and our areas in our lives sometimes, but we can recognize that we still got to work our way through that today, life, I'm confronting you with a spirit of faith, with a spirit of belief, so that I can recognize that at least it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Finances, I'm looking at you today with a spirit of faith to know that it's a possibility. I'm sowing seed today knowing that it's a possibility. But again, we have been trained so well by this generation of unbelief to, to, to look at every situation as hopeless. 
Oh, there's no hope. I'm just going to go into my house, close my doors, try to hang in as best I can because there's no hope for these children. There's no hope for these black males. There's no hope for these families around here. There's no hope for them at all. There's no hope. They're just giving themselves to this culture. They're hurting so much that they've turned to a culture of addiction. And there's no hope for them to approach situations with a spirit of hopelessness. That's exactly what we're going to get. The hopelessness that exists as we can confront the situations with that spirit of faith all things are possible so here Jesus takes the focus off God because God has already done his work he's already done his work and so Jesus places the, the, the focus on that individual in the midst of that situation that father that deals with that and so the individual then is to live in such a way that the focus is back on what God has already done in his word, okay? And so the focus now for that father is to focus back on what God has already done by the stripes that Jesus bore on his back. We were healed. Jesus is not out here, and let me put a stripe on your back so I can be healed. The stripes were already there. The God's work has already taken place. We don't need to put Jesus on the cross today. He's already died for our sins. He's paid the price for our transgressions. He's made a way for transformation. He's made a way for revival. That, that has already been manifest. We just got to create the environment of faith that you and I live in, that we dwell in, that we hold on to, that we will anchor ourselves to. And so Jesus says, my friend, put the focus back on what God has already done in his word. God, you've done this. God, you've already helped me. God, you've delivered me. God, you have set me apart. God, you have called me. You've already done the work. Now, what I got to do is to create that environment. And it's not, I'm going to create an environment all on my job. I'm going to get everybody righteous on my job. No, you got to work on yourself, getting yourself righteous, getting your attitude righteous. Creating that type of environment that the spirit can move. That no matter what, no matter where you are, you're not, you're not righteous in the midst of a righteous crowd. But when there's a, not a righteous crowd, you just let everything hang out. No, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. And so verse 24, it captures the awakening of the man's faith. <laughs> I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe that the, the man, he catches on. There is a spiritual awakening. I believe that some things are possible. I believe that there's transformation in my life. I believe. Help my unbelief. There is the awakening of this man's faith. When you can state that, when you can say that, the writer of the proverb says what? The power of life and death is in the tongue. When we begin to kind of say that and to speak that because we want that to get into our hearts and that's how things get into our hearts through, our, through the change, through our mouth gate, what we say and through our eye gate, what we see and through our ear gate, what we hear. But if you hear garbage, junk, trash, garbage, gossip, all of that, guess what you got in your heart? You got it, baby. You got it. All that you have taken in, you become a garbage disposal. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it because I'm taking it in. I'm taking it in. Knowing how to kind of flip the script or just to turn away from those particular conversations and not giving heed unto that. And so when we want to see some differences made by making a statement of faith, there is an arising in faith. Faith is more than an asking statement. It's a, a lifestyle of serving the world around us. A lifestyle of finding out what God is doing, then sacrificing ourselves towards that. As we ready ourselves for our time of prayer, behind the message to release you and the word with that power. What is it that today you choose to believe in? That you choose to identify from the environment of faith to knowing with God all things are indeed possible. What is it? It's more than an asking statement, but it's creating that environment around you. That, that, that's what we've been doing. And we, we can't just do this one day out of the week. Okay, Sunday mornings is a good environment. 
But we have to be intentional, looking at what, what we're pumping in. What's pumping in through our eye gate? What are we allowing ourselves to see? What's pumping in through our ear gates? What's, oh, ain't nothing wrong with watching that, seeing that, and listening to that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And what's faith about that? Oh, everybody else is doing it. See, we live in the midst of an unbelieving generation that's all in us. We ask God to sanctify us, purge us, get all of that desire out. And your flesh is going to hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. But that's all right. Your flesh is not in control, in, in charge here. The Lord Jesus Christ is. We want to pray to God today. We're going to believe that there is something good in Palmetto. There is something good in St. Landry Parish. There is something good in Louisiana. Went to some kind of uh, one conference years ago. And that preacher asked me, what you doing in Louisiana? I'm like, Louisiana is what's happening, partner. God is moving. Why would I go someplace where everybody is perfect? Why would, I, why would I do that? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? I say, Louisiana is prime territory, my friend, for the move of God. I praise God that you got the move of God where you at, my brother. God has a calling. God has a calling. Friends, I understand the environment that you live in because you know what? I kind of live in it too, you know? Observing some things and things come to discourage you. And, oh man, is it even worth it? Okay, if we allow ourselves to reign in this hopelessness environment, you get what you get, what you get, what you get. But for you and I to be change agents, Jesus is alive, Jesus is moving. Jesus is moving in lives right here in our area thanks be to god don't tell me ain't nothing happening ain't nothing going on child there is something the work of the eternal work is going on work that'll last after every economy on earth has crashed it's still happening our economy shut down 12 months ago but you know what jesus was exalted it didn't shut him down it didn't shut the body of christ down <laughs> we make it through anything and whatever thing it is what are you believing god for Set that environment in you. Set that environment. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks today, Lord God, as we bless your name. Father, as the scripture speaks about that father who was desperate for his son. And as Jesus set the environment to him that believes all things are possible. The awakening of this man's faith. I believe. Help my unbelief. Father, may that statement be made by us as we recognize a unique calling upon our lives today, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For that one who is wandering, the one that has been sucked in by this unbelieving generation, their lives are raggedy, their lives are rugged. Save and deliver, O oh God. Create faith where there is a choice to believe you, O oh God. Father, where there has been the weariness of believers, weariness of followers of Jesus Christ, as far as we can go, I just want my church back. That's all I want, God. Everything will be okay with my church back. But we recognize, Lord, we're doing church right here, what it's all about. Church outside the doors. The church has left the building. There's a time coming we go in, but the focus of the church really is about what happens when we leave. Create that belief in us, oh God. Jesus, may people talk about you. Jesus, may pe people speak about you, Jesus. You become famous. Everybody's, oh, Jesus is doing this. Jesus is providing this. Jesus is doing this. Jesus is available unto everybody. Look what Jesus has done in my life. Jesus, look what Jesus has done in my family. Jesus, hear our prayer today. Holy Spirit, continue to minister to us, even as we... Take this word in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Celebrate God.
still have joy, still have joy. After all that we've been through, the devil thought he had us down. After all that we've been through, I still have joy. I still have hope. Oh, glory to God. That, that one of those verses say, I still have hope. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you again. So good to have you here. Those in the parking lot, those that are out here on the outside, we are so grateful that uh, through your faith and faithfulness, you continue to enable the word of God to go forward. And we do celebrate that and recognize that. We thank you for your continual uh, sowing seed. Again, as you bring in your tithes and your offerings, as we uh, just celebrate what God is doing and our faithfulness. We're not coming as stingy folks. We're not even coming as broke folks because we sow seed and uh, the seed that makes a difference in lives. And you know, when there is no harvest, there's no seed planted, you can't expect a harvest. We have a beautiful garden coming up on the backside here because somebody planted a seed. Somebody sowed a seed. And we thank you that, again, there are various ways that you give. Many of you give online. Those of you who may have your giving in your envelopes, we welcome you to uh, get the attention of an usher as they will pass around and uh, to uh, assist you and to minister unto, unto your needs. Again, just to kind of share uh, just a little bit more uh, where we are. We thank you on this second Sunday that we came out. Just a beautiful Sunday. Next Sunday is Father's Day. Woohoo! Father's Day as we celebrate fathers. Amen. Amen. And so our plan is to be back out here, uh, our outdoor service, our driving service, uh, you know, listening to the weather forecast today. It's always weather permitting. We'll see what happens, uh, be it rain. But our schedule for the month of June, next Sunday, we're scheduled to be outside. Then the fourth Sunday uh, of June, we're going to do our Facebook Live messaging. Then the first Sunday of July, July 1st, we're scheduled to be in the sanctuary. I'm so grateful for those individuals. We had about, a ten, about 10 individuals that came yesterday to the training. We still need more volunteers. We would appreciate some of our young adults to step up and to take responsibility uh, in regards uh, to our ministry, as there will be three sets of teams that will be established. The greeters will be taking care of this particular area, opening a door, handing off to the health care ministry, and then handing off into the ushers as you would enter the building. And so all of that ministry endeavor is, is taking place. Uh, if, you, if you still want to, sign, to, to serve in this helps ministry, we encourage you to let me know, to document it, write it on a paper, give it to one of the ushers that will have that name that you can remain in, uh, in the loop. So that's our Sunday schedules moving forward. Wednesday night, we continue with our Zoom session. Uh, this Wednesday night, we'll be talking about the community's Juneteenth celebration that is taking place on this coming Saturday, the 19th of June. What is Juneteenth about? I'm told that our governor, uh, the Honorable John Bell Edwards, has signed uh, that bill into law to identify Juneteenth as a state holiday. I'm told that there are some workers who have Friday off as they're celebrating Juneteenth on the 18th. Uh, and so that's news indeed. And so our community that has a heritage that every coming generation needs to hear about, uh, again, we extend that welcome uh, to you uh, for uh, our Juneteenth uh, celebration. I guess my little flyer flew away. It flew down. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman. Everybody give Evan a round of applause. Isn't he just awesome? Awesome, awesome, awesome. He has a calling indeed. And so we thank you for that. So at 11 o'clock Saturday, things will begin to get underway. There, there, there are tables and booths that will be on display. There will be tents that will be out there. It won't be just ball face sun, if you will. And then about 1 o'clock-ish will be the actual program. Uh, Father um, Chuck... Chuck Andrews, Charles Andrews will be the guest speaker uh, for that uh, momentous occasion as we'll celebrate the Juneteenth celebration. So again, the, the program will begin someplace around 1 o'clock, 1.30. Uh, that is to be determined as we move forward in that. So just identifying that. 
Uh, other highlights, again, this coming Thursday and Friday, we have our second harvest food distribution. As we begin to come out of the pandemic, uh, just need to calculate the, the hundreds of tons of food that has been distributed even throughout the time and the life of uh, this, this pandemic. Uh, we do uh, highlight that. Um, as we look forward uh, to what's going on, other announcements, again, we encourage you to check out your text messaging. Again, we have transitioned to that form of communication as far as uh, opportunities that are known, opportunities that are listed there. We just uh, highlight that and encourage you to take note uh, of what those particular announcements uh, may be. Again, we're getting ready to close out our survey. We're so grateful, those of you who believe in uh, just, just health. And again, what we do, we won't enter the sanctuary in fear. That's not what it's all about. But when we can see that there are approximately 70 to 80 percent of 12 year olds and up in New Life Church that has taken the vaccine compared to our area, it's about 17 percent of the population 12 and up that has actually been vaccinated. So everybody is doing away with the mask, but there are 80 percent of the folks who've never had the vaccine. And so this is why we're not going to be responsible intentionally for any outbreak of the virus. And so that's the, why we're taking the precautions. You can fuss at me and complain at me all you want. But one thing you can't say about me is that me, me was irresponsible. Okay. And so do what you can. I'm big enough. I can take it because you know what? That building don't stop the church. We've learned that. I knew it all the while. I've been telling y'all for 30 years that the church is not in a building like that. The church is where you live. And when we got so many people talking about ain't nothing good around here, that's our fault. That's our fault. We haven't lifted Jesus. You want to tell me Jesus ain't good? You going to tell me Jesus saving souls not good? See, we are unbelieving generation. Look, I didn't preach the word. That's all right. Y'all go back and watch it again on the, on Facebook Live. I'm just so grateful that uh, that you guys are here. Let's keep praying one for another and uh, believing that the, the Lord is, is having his way in our midst. So that's what the week is looking like. We have some of our kids that are part of Camp Accelerate at various schools in the area. Again, something to uh, get our kids involved in that. So, again, Wednesday night, then looking for you uh, on Saturday to come in to support the community. The first ever, I guess, Juneteenth celebration, but just to be a part uh, of that. And so we so we'll welcome you to do that. All right. All right. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. OK, well, we're going to continue on. We have some afternoon meetings that's coming up. Our trustee board, our reopening task force will be meeting further clarifying and making the decisions as we uh, move forward in uh, this particular week, in this particular uh, particular season. It's blessed indeed. All right, those of you outside services, let's stand. We're going to ready ourselves for our benediction as we leave this place, but we never leave the presence of the Lord as we exalt him. Uh, again, so good to have those of you in our parking lot services. Thank you for uh, inviting others, for letting others know that... Uh, uh, they can be a part of that as we come out again next Sunday. We're scheduled to be right back here weather permitting and uh, we're, we're out of the Lord I think sister Bianca has given out some more of the t-shirts uh, that has been have been ordered uh, that second order uh, Again, she has some of those and I'm sure that she has tried to communicate some things for those of you who have orders that have been uh, been made so we look forward to celebrating our fathers on next Sunday Woohoo! All right, let's, let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, for our coming together today. It's so good to have been in your presence today, Lord God. Thank you for the power of your word, the anointing of your word. To him that believes, to them that believe, all things are possible. Thank you that we live in the midst of, a, of possibilities, even as we live in the hopelessness of a generation of unbelief. Bless your people, watch over them, protect them from dangers, from accidents, seen and unseen. I thank you that there are angels that are covering them. Order their steps by your word as we live to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you.